Welcome to Beldox Online. Hello. Hello. How are you all there? Well, you see, I uh, stay in the forest. Okay. I'm reconstructing my. Uh, uh, the things uh? are getting better now. Yeah, yeah, it's good in the forest. Yeah, it's better not to go to the town. <laughs> uh, first of all, congratulations on your very impressive, uh, very brave, very sophisticated movie, and you're welcome. Uh, I think. I could wrong, but the main topic, maybe your obsession through your work is the question of freedom or how to be free or ideological problem. Am I right? Mm. Yes, it's the main question of freedom, but uh, for me it's mostly on um, every, you know, like even uh, political freedom starts from the personal and human freedom because we make choices every day. And that's how we choose the way we live. How did you find this place in Arctic Circle in northern Russia? In one interview you said there are a lot of places without names, uh, they have only on numbers. Is that true? Yeah, yes. This town, uh, the Upper City town, is uh, one of the hundreds of uh, industrial towns uh, that appeared in the Soviet Union. And um, I chose it for its uh, wonderful landscape and for its uh, Gulag path, uh, which uh, uh, is, uh, you know, like, uh, I think, which is the reason, still the reason, why do the people uh, live like this in Russia? Uh, your movie was international success, but I'm curious to know, uh, did you show it at home and uh, something about reaction at home in Russia? Yes, we showed it in St. Petersburg and Moscow, and uh, it was very interesting because uh, the people who uh, didn't go there uh, and who uh, visit uh, Russian province, provincial uh, towns uh, very rarely, uh, were uh, kind of, uh, they didn't like the film, and they said that it is uh, propagandistic, uh, but the people who live there and who have this um, an idea of how the lives going on, we're very thankful for this film. So it was a kind of discussion, it was very interesting, yeah. Okay, uh, in your movie, uh, there are plenty of very brave uh, segments. Uh, for me, uh, in general meaning, uh, we have a chance to see children games uh, are always war games, am I right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it, is, it was, uh, of, is it a kind of Soviet heritage of the past? I mean, of military past? Yes, yes, sure, because uh, the uh, current uh, propagandistic machine is built uh, on the idea that uh, the Soviet Union won the Second World War. And uh, actually, the patriotic, uh, uh, the patriotic feeling uh, uh, which the uh, the government and governmental systems uh, try to you know like uh, apprise in the people. Uh, so this uh, patriotic uh, kind of uh, propagandistic uh, thing is based on uh, the uh, idea of winning in the Second World War, and it says that you should uh, sacrifice yourself uh, to stay immortal in the people's uh, in the people's. Uh, in the people's mind, like a hero. Yeah, that's why, yes, uh, these uh, kind of games come from uh, this um, idea. And uh, they never say on uh, the price of how uh, the Soviet Union, uh, the price the Soviet Union pay for taking part in the Second World War. And that was the uh, thousand lives of the people who died not only on the frontiers, but in the Gulag. Who, uh, who actually worked for uh, the war. Uh, tell me one thing, uh, are they ready completely for military education or not? These boys? Yeah. Well, I think it's kind of a game for them, like a video game. You know, like with shooting and all the stuff. And also it is, uh, this kind of organization is a substitute for the real family because their parents are usually spend their time at work or they have some problems or uh, you know like 
uh, the people leave uh, such kind of life that they don't have the time for the family anymore. And these organizations are more the substitute for the family. There are two levels in your reality of your movie. Uh, on one side, uh, it's very cruel reality, but on the other side, you found the art as a way of expression, for example, dances and ballet or something like that. Uh, what do you think about their effort to do some better things than military education, to be the artist or something like that? I chose these kind of activities uh, because uh, there people make something together and uh, these young ladies are uh, supposed to, to, it's not about the creativity, this kind of dance, it's about, you know, like uh, of making things together, of being synchronous, it's like marching. Yeah, and uh, that was interesting. I asked one girl who attended uh, both these military lessons and uh, the dancing lessons, oh, why do, do they, do, did she choose to do this? And she said, you know, um, I, I understand that I need to be strong and these activities make me stronger. In your movie, you are the author in completely. You are the writer, director of cinematography, uh, editor, director. Why? <laughs> well, I uh, made a lot, uh, little by little. And Are you I have, interested uh, to all these aspects also. of movie making? I would make uh, only directed with pleasure <laughs> if I had <laughs> chance for this. <laughs> Well, but uh, yeah, yeah, in some circumstances, uh, I had to edit and well, but I like editing by myself okay. uh, because um, I think when I make it by myself, I can find a special intonation or special language or some keys, yes, which would be not on the only in the storytelling, but in the language of the image and sound. Uh, that's why I made it. Uh, same with the camera. I had the second camera uh, because I had a cinematographer and I just filmed with the second camera. Uh, sometimes because, uh, you know, like uh, the cinematographer films the general idea and the general scene and uh, I catch up some moments like this dialogue about the immortal jealousy. There was no cinematographer near, so I had to film it by myself and some other details, you know, like small details. So. It's not completely my work, but uh, some parts, yes. It, it was the same in your previous work, Come Back Free? Yeah, yeah. Then I came back free in Chechenia. I started to feel by myself after, because um, it was a new thing for me when I started. Uh, I realized that we lose life when I stay without the camera, uh, yeah. So that uh, the cinematographer films only, you know, like general line, very ration, in a rational way. And some small things which are not expected, but which are precious, uh, you know, for documentary, uh, they are getting lost. Then I started to take the camera with me. Yeah. If, you, if you compare these two movies, which one is harder to work, this one or previous one? I, well, they are uncomparable actually because they are very different <laughs> from the sense of uh, organization and finding the film. Uh, this uh, Immortal was much easier because um, this, this is something which I grew in, you know, like it's same in St. Petersburg, it was the same kind of education <laughs> in my childhood. Uh, and I understand it very well, so I wrote the script and the title Immortal, it appeared before the filming, so we started with it from the very beginning. Uh, in Chechenia, it was the culture which I was not very aware of, which I, where I didn't feel very aware of myself. That's why we searched for the film and we made the film at the editing mostly. But in the sense of uh, some human, you know, like uh, comfort at the, while making film, um, uh, it was better at Ch in Chechenia because it's more living topic and there are living people with the human motivations and here we film some intellectual construction mostly and on a kind of very dark and heartbreaking stuff and it was for me like a human being harder to live with this. Where, while I was making, when I made the film Immortal, surely. 
uh, after, did you show them your movie, Come Back Free? And I'm interested yes. for the reaction. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, we had, uh, did they say? Oh, it was different because uh, I showed it to the guy who helped us because I wanted to go to bring it to Chechenia and organize a screening and he said well you know like uh, they shoot and it's prohibited to shoot uh, uh, said uh, Chechenia said but come on you know everybody shoots at the wedding <laughs> said yes I know but you know like we can have problems <laughs> well but my friend she's a journalist she organized kind of a secret screening in Grozny not for my characters but for the students and uh, they were from Grozny, and they, it was a very interesting to me. She recorded a um, uh, talk about the film for me. And uh, they don't go often to the mountains. And in Grozny, it is totally different life. It differs much from the um, uh, life of the mountainous people. And they said they uh, were a little upset that it looks like it's a medieval. <laughs> Okay. Because uh, they are guys from the town, yeah. <laughs> um, no, well, but uh, it was very different. And for the immigrants from for Chechenians, which uh, immigrated from uh, kind of a long time ago, because you know, like in Europe, uh, live a lot of immigrants from Chechenia because of repressions and war. And uh, they thanked me because they said that they feel like they are at home. That like that this film reminded them about their life back home. So it was uh, very different because, you know, like uh, people are totally different and have a different uh, life already. And, you know, like that more than half of the people of Chechenia don't live at Chechenia. Uh, by the way, do you think the question of Chechenia is still open? Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, yes. Yes, sure. Uh, because you know, like uh, you know, what happening in Belarus now, yeah, and the same thing is happening in Chechnya because people actually don't like, uh, you know, like nobody likes the regime they have there, and um, it is uh, it doesn't color correlate not only with their culture, but uh, with their kind of um, human uh, sense of of safety. They don't feel safe. And uh, this can't last for long, so one day this will uh, quit. Uh, they don't want the war. They are very tired of the war, uh, actually, and the catastrophe, because it will last 20 years was a disaster for them. But, you know, like they live under such a huge pressure that uh, I don't know what will happen, but something will happen one day for sure. Uh, what is your personal opinion? Um... Is it mix of cultures still possible, generally speaking, not only between Russians and Chechenians, but in the global world? Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Do you believe I in that? that? Oh, well, I know that, that it is possible because uh, when I talk to the people from different cultures uh, and from different religions, even for, you know, we have a half of, uh, of uh, people in Russia are Muslims. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, like, uh, they do respect uh, other culture when uh, they feel that uh, we respect their culture. And uh, this is not a problem, and I think this is not a problem for uh, Christians uh, also, because it uh, mostly comes from the politicians, this escalation of the conflict. Because from what I learned in uh, Chechenia, people and, and traveling on Caucasus in other countries, nobody needs war. Uh, no, <laughs> people don't need war and we are all human beings and we know how to live together in, uh, because we are all different. And sometimes, you know, like personal character can be much different, uh, can make much difference than the culture. <laughs> And we can make it uh, for sure if uh, the, the, there would be no political interest in escalating conflict. Your visual style in yes. this yes. immortal is very, very impressive. You are almost a true poet. Tell me one thing, did you find some influence yes. of some documentary filmmaker in the past or, or the present time? And who they are? Do you have some teachers or some favorite directors yeah. or some, some uh, film styles in the past? Because Soviet cinema and especially Russian cinema has a great tradition in documentary filmmaking, you know? 
since silent era to today? Uh, so yeah, thank you for <laughs> uh, talking about the language and uh, the uh, documentaries. Um, uh, yeah, there is a great tradition in Russia and uh, in Baltic countries also. Uh, this kind of poetic documentary, which uh, was very popular in Saint Petersburg School and in Baltic School also. Um, of course, we are we learned it, and we are, you know, like me and my cinematographers are part of this tradition. And um, our editor, Sandy Koning, was from Belgium, and in Belgium there is a, a little bit different, but also very, uh, very rich cinematic culture. So uh, we had it mixed because we had uh, uh, Estonians, Russians, and uh, 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 editor from Belgium uh, in our film. Uh, as, uh, as we say about the reference which we used, it was not only documentaries but fiction films also, and but mostly photos. It was mostly photography for the image. Uh, but uh, if you talk about my favorite uh, documentary, uh, you know, like something that which I sent as a reference from Russian filmmakers, it was uh, Viktor Semenyuk. It, he's not very famous. Uh, okay. Because he uh, filmed only uh, short documentaries, but uh, totally fantastic. He has a film. Uh, um, I don't know. Road, which <laughs> where we I we took a lot. It was uh, there. Uh, he filmed there. Um, uh, 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 train, like you know, like uh, bringing people to the moon. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, this kind of fantasy, and he was also my teacher of editing. So, uh, yeah, uh, I can say that I'm very thankful for his film. As for now, we have, uh, of course, uh, Kosakovsky, Sergei, uh, Victor Kosakovsky, and Sergei Lazmichev's films, which are very different, very influenced uh, Baltic uh, poetic uh, school, which appeared in Soviet Union, uh, and which was actually uh, one of the few they were one of the few films. Uh, a few authors who uh, uh, appear to show some human life in a poetic way instead of, uh, you know, like making propagandistic films. Yeah, uh, that's why it was, was uh, kind of uh, mixed. And from uh, the fiction, uh, I, <laughs> main reference that my cinematographer said that I'm crazy <laughs> to make such reference, but it was a, a French film, uh, uh, Holy Motors, you know? Okay. Yeah. It's kind of non-linear, but very uh, kind of uh, expressive uh, film uh, with an interesting way of uh, using the space and switching from the uh, space of fantasy to the reality. Uh, that's uh, what I like from this film uh, because um, it was uh, one of the ideas which we made in Immortal to um, uh, create kind of a um a space of a myth in which people act and to uh make it and as a one line to uh, uh present this um uh, mythological space which actually uh makes people live their lives uh, instead of living uh the reality the last one for today. First of all, thank you very, very much indeed for this beautiful conversation. I'm curious to know about the, your next step in movie making. Uh, do you already have any idea for your brand new movie? <laughs> I'm also I'm also curious about what each step will be <laughs> there because I have uh, several ideas and scripts, but uh, you know we are very dependent on the production side now. Uh, that's why I don't know uh, which uh, of the projects will will go first. Yeah, yeah. Is, is it difficult so, to much, find support yeah. for your work? Hmm? Is it difficult to find support to your work? No, yes, because we are cl we are closed, and uh, yeah, it's hard to film, and uh, it's hard to make any uh, profession uh, kind of uh, deal now, because nobody knows what will be with the borders and with all this stuff. So thank now it's hard times. I can say, yeah. Thank you so much, and all the best, and welcome to Belgrade and Belgrade. Bye. Thank you. Bye.